What's going on guys? So we are out here with the 2023 GMC Sierra Denali 1500 with the three liter baby Duramax, the LZO Duramax engine in it. Um, I showed you guys the payload sticker on this truck and I'll show it to you here again in a second, but we're gonna hitch it up so we're gonna check the actual tongue weight and we're gonna see what that weight actually does to the truck itself. And we'll even add weight if we have to, just to kind of see what the maximum tongue weight capacity of this truck actually looks like when you have it maxed out. So this is gonna be an interesting video. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, let's start by taking a look at the numbers. So this truck, again, has a really cool trailering information sticker here, and it shows that the maximum capacity from a conventional trailer, 8,800 pounds with an 880 pound maximum tongue weight capacity. If I were gonna do some type of gooseneck towing, the maximum gooseneck trailer capacity is actually 6,500 pounds. So it's significantly lower than the conventional towing capacity, which is not uncommon with half ton trucks, but the tongue weight capacity for a gooseneck is 975 pounds. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, if your truck's payload capacity is 1,442 pounds, then why is this number so different than what the truck's actual cargo capacity is? Again, you always have to remember, that that maximum capacity accounts for a lot more than just trailer towing, a lot more than just what you have in the bed of the truck. It accounts for all the people, supplies, and stuff you're gonna have in the truck itself. So you have a family of four in here, let's say that total weight of that family is 600 to 700 pounds. Well, that's gonna count against the truck's cargo capacity, and that's only gonna leave you a certain amount remaining for towing and payload in the bed. And that's the part I always have to try to help educate folks on. Let's say you have 2,000 pounds worth of maximum cargo capacity. If you have six to 700 pounds worth of people in the truck, you're talking about 1,300 pounds remaining for everything else, including your hitch, the stuff in the bed of your truck, and your trailer. But what we're gonna do first here is use the nifty e-trailer scale, take a tongue weight measurement of the Texas Pride low boy. This is a 14 foot trailer. This thing is absolutely insane in terms of how it's built though. Um, and it's not as low as it could be. There's a lot of low boy trailers that are actually significantly lower because they don't have such a robust frame. I mean, check that frame out. Because this frame is so robust, it gives it the ability to carry a lot more weight than most conventional 14 foot low boy trailers. But that said, it makes the trailer very heavy. So what we're gonna do is pull out the e-trailer scale, the tongue weight scale. We're gonna put this on it just so we can see how much tongue weight is currently being transferred. And we're gonna see specifically how that impacts the ride of this truck. Because remember, and let me show you one more time, the actual conventional trailer tongue weight capacity is 800 and 80 pounds, 10% of the maximum conventional towing weight capacity. So let's go ahead and get the tongue weight scale out. Let's see how much this thing weighs, and then we'll transfer it over to the uh, GMC and see how it impacts the overall suspension. By the way, want to give a big shout out to the viewers who told me about a really cool secret in terms of locking the multi-pro section of the tailgate, which is this section right here. Basically, all you have to do is hold this button in for about three or four seconds, and you'll see your light start to flash, and it prevents the multi-pro section from opening. Every time you press it, the lights will flash but it prevents this part from opening if you have a hitch in place so you don't run the risk of accidentally dropping this middle section and contacting the hitch. I can still drop the regular tailgate, no problem at all. But yeah, very, very cool feature. It was nice that GMC actually put that in place to just kind of remind you that you have a hitch in place and not accidentally damage your new tailgate. Anyways, let's go ahead and get the really cool e-trailer tongue weight scale underneath the tongue of this trailer. And we're gonna see how much tongue weight is currently transferring over. Love having a hydraulic front tongue jack. Certainly does add some weight to the front along with those two big old batteries in there. So again, another big difference between this and perhaps another conventional low boy trailer just look at the frame section. That is an eight inch C-beam channel frame, huge coupler. Everything on this is really heavy. I got two huge batteries inside of it. Got the charger, got a Fort Knox lock in here. Got this whole portion up front from Stillwell that does the hydraulic portion for the leg. And then check all this out. This is an open tube. This is all fully boxed sections of steel. Very, very robust. 
Anyways, let's see how much it weighs. Okay, 750 pounds. Check that out. 750 pounds of tongue weight on this 14 foot low boy trailer before having any weight on the back. And if we put stuff in the back, well, that's obviously gonna impact this. If we move it ahead of the axles, it's gonna add weight. If we position it directly over the axles, it'll probably kind of balance itself out. If we put it behind the axles, then we'll remove weight, but that makes for a very sketchy towing situation. But if you notice, we actually built this trailer with the axles pushed further to the back. So any weight you put on here is either gonna be kind of centered over the front axle, which is not a bad thing, or forward of the axles, which in the case of my F450, which is traditionally used to haul this trailer, it's not really going to impact the uh, the payload capacity on that truck at all because I have quite a bit of payload capacity. So we know that there's 750 pounds worth of tongue weight. We're just shy of the uh, the maximum tongue weight capacity of the truck by about 130 pounds. So we're going to go ahead and remove the e-trailer scale. We're going to back the GMC underneath it, and we're going to see specifically how 750 pounds worth of tongue weight, which is not an insignificant amount of tongue weight, is gonna impact the truck. And to kind of put this into perspective, the tongue weight on this trailer as it sits is gonna rival that of about a 6,000 pound travel trailer. Not even kidding you. So about a 6,000 pound travel trailer dry is gonna add probably 650 pounds worth of tongue weight to the back of a vehicle. But once you start loading it up, once you add batteries, propane, and all that stuff, you're probably gonna be closer to 750 to 850 pounds. And it also depends on the floor plan. If your storage is all in the back of the RV, well then as you add weight, it could actually take weight off of the front. So you always wanna be careful about that. Anyways, let's get the GMC backed up underneath the trailer and see how 750 pounds worth of tongue weight impact this brand new 2023 truck. Okay, so we are virtually right under the ball. It should adjust itself to that. And uh, it is an auto coupler. So added this coupler from e-trailer. It's a Demco, easy latch, super cool. Lifts up right here. That's if you want to uncouple it, but it should automatically uncouple and recouple once I drop the trailer down on it. Okay, let's drop it down and see how it looks. You know what, I have a relatively long cord here, so let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, so the foot is off the ground. Let's see what this looks like further away. Wow, that, uh, that squatted down quite a bit. You know what, I'm gonna set the camera up right here. I'm gonna go ahead and lift it back up and lower it back down so you can see exactly what it looks like. And then we'll also take a measurement. Okay, so we are currently at 35, 35 inches to the bottom of the plastic right there. Let's raise it back off and see how that changes. So 35 inches is our lowered number. Okay, we are off the ball. Let's see what the number is now. So 35 inches compressed. We are at, we are at 36 and three quarter inches. You see that? And compressed. So we're talking about one and three quarter inches in terms of drop. So you know what's kind of funny is, even though it looked really dramatic, it wasn't quite as dramatic as I thought it would be. It seemed like it was like two and a half inches, but it really wasn't. So you know what I'm gonna do here real quick? I'm gonna set the camera out at the back like this. It might actually help to straighten out the tires, give you a little bit of perspective. Let me do that. Okay, so now that we have the tires straight, I'm gonna set the camera up right about here, and let's see how it looks when I drop the trailer weight down. Again, it really looks like it uh, it drops the truck down a lot more than one and a half inches or one and three quarter inches, but it certainly does not look level. You know, there's a slight rake to it with the front being a little lower when it's not hitched up to anything, but with this much weight, it definitely adds some uh, definitely adds some sag to the back. 
Hey Mark, you wanna hop into the back of the Texas Pride trailer real quick and just sit right up there where the tire is, or right where the winch is, and let's see how that extra weight adds to the sag of this truck. I'd love to tell you that Mark weighs like 125 pounds, but he doesn't. All right, so he is standing on the front of the Texas Pride trailer and it dropped down even more. Let's take a measurement real quick. Okay, with Mark standing on the trailer, the front of it, it brought it down to 34 and three quarters. So with Mark's weight at the front of the trailer, it brought it down an extra quarter of an inch. So let's, uh, you know what, let's unhitch the trailer. We're gonna put the e-trailer scale back under there and then we'll kind of do the same thing. We'll lower it down and we'll see uh, what Mark's weight does in terms of adding to the scale weight so we can see specifically where the truck is sitting when he was standing in the front of it. All right, so I know I'm not doing this like very scientifically in terms of the order that I'm going in, but uh, I think it all should still kind of check out the same. So I'm gonna ask Mark to go ahead and get in the front of the trailer before I lower it down, and then I'll lower it down with his weight on the front. But before he does that, let's just verify the readout one more time. All right, 750 pounds. I'll lift it up, go ahead and hop in. All right, he is standing at the very, very front of the trailer. See him up here. Let's drop it down. Okay, so we are at 900 and about 950 pounds. So 950 pounds worth of weight. And the reason why is because almost all of his weight, not all of it, but a good amount of it's gonna transfer to the front of the trailer simply because he is way, way, way forward of the axles. If he was standing right on the front of the A-frame, it would definitely be more than that. So we're at about 950 pounds worth of tongue weight. What we're gonna do, again, is to go ahead and lift the trailer off, back the truck up, lower it down with Mark on, and we're gonna see how it impacts the suspension again. All right, so we still have Mark on the front of the trailer. We're gonna go ahead and lower the weight down. 950 pounds is what we're at. All right. Okay, tongue is off the ground. And got the tape measure out. Let's see where we're at. So we are at 34 and three quarter inches. Okay, Mark, go ahead and step out. Okay, we are now at 35 inches. So it dropped a quarter of an inch with his weight in the back. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull the weight off and check it one more time. Just kind of triple verifying everything. We are off the ball and we are at 36, 36 and three quarter inches. So with the 750 pounds worth of tongue weight, it drops it down to 35 inches. So it drops it down one and three quarter inches. And then when we add Mark to the back of it, it drops it down an additional quarter of an inch. So it drops it down a total of two inches with roughly 950 pounds worth of weight in the back. So yeah, the, uh, the suspension on this truck didn't sag as much as I would think, but it sits kind of low anyways. It is a four wheel drive truck. Uh, once you put the weight on the back, you can instantly see that it is definitely uh, slouching to the back. There's a bit of squat that makes the truck not look balanced. But from this angle, you can see that there is a bit of rake to the front. So with the weight on the back, uh, yeah, it definitely takes that rake away. You know what, I'm gonna drop the tongue weight down a little bit just to see what it would take to level out the truck. So let's go ahead and bring the trailer down. Probably right around, right around there. Okay, so Mark was spotting me there and showing me what he thought would be a level ride. Yeah, that's just about level right there. I don't know how much weight that is. And unfortunately, I don't have the ability to lower the tongue jack with any type of precision. So we just kind of have to eyeball it and guess. But what's the difference between that and fully off the ground? Quite a bit. And then as you add more weight, it definitely makes it squat. But yeah, this is, this is what it looks like with 750 pounds 
of weight in the bed. Or at least on the back, the very back of it. Kind of crazy, huh? And this is the reason why, again, when I talk about towing, you have to look at all your numbers. A weight distribution hitch would certainly help with this setup. It would definitely transfer weight because when I talk about a 6,000 pound travel trailer, this is the equivalent of about a 6,000 pound travel trailer, tongue weight wise. And weight distribution would certainly help level the truck out, but how much heavier than that do you really wanna go to where you really have to use that weight distribution hitch to its max just to be able to level your truck out? And that's kind of the key behind it. So. On a trailer like this, you can't actually use weight distribution. There's no weight distribution available for it. But on your typical travel trailer where you can transfer some of that weight, you know, you're transferring quite a bit of weight, even if the trailer is only a 6,000 pound trailer transferring roughly 750 pounds to the back of your truck. The minute you start going much heavier than that, let's say, again, you transfer 950 pounds, which is probably the equivalent of about a 7,500 to 8,000 pound travel trailer, actually a little less than that, probably closer to 7,500 pounds. You know, 950 pounds is a lot of weight on the back of a truck with very soft suspension. And that's how these half ton trucks are designed. They're designed to give you a really comfortable ride. And they've accomplished that because the ride in this truck is significantly more comfortable than it is in my F450. It's so much more uh, of a pleasant ride than the F450. You know, on this truck, you're gonna give up a lot of capabilities in terms of overall capacity and how that weight looks whenever it's hitched up to the back of the truck. Anyways, guys, uh, we're going to actually take this trailer out. I definitely want to do some towing with it, but we're going to do that in a separate video because I, I pretty much took up this entire video just talking a little bit about tongue weight and how it impacts the back of this brand new GMC Denali pickup truck. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.